And to do a dependency chart, we simply answer these four questions. Uh, what happens now? What can be done before? What happens next? What can be done at the same time? And we're simply going to create a dependency chart of those tasks such that we know what happens first, what happens concurrently or sequentially, what comes afterwards. It's the sequence of, of tasks through the project. Now, when you look at the project management books, there are two main ways of doing this. There's the activity on node method, where the tasks, the activities, from the work breakdown structures are written on nodes or boxes. That's the, the top of this slide, and that's the method we'll use in this module. But sometimes in textbooks, you'll see this activity on arrow, where the task or the activity is written on the arrow and they're connected with boxes. So you may see those that in textbooks, we're going to use activity on node AON. Sometimes you see AOA, activity on arrow. And this is the uh, logic we're going to use. Uh, in the first example here, task A has got to finish before task B can start. So B depends on A. Task X depends on A. But task Y cannot start until both A and B have finished. If A is finished, we could start X, but we cannot start Y because we have to wait for B to finish. The dependency for Y is it depends on A and B. Now, it could be you create uh, very complex diagrams. Uh, and as we shall see, one way of doing this is using post-it notes and whiteboards. And you sometimes find that the dependency lines go all over the place. Uh, in this example, um, X, Y, and Z can't start until A, B, and C is finished. If we, if we look at it, X can't start till A, B, and C is finished. Y can't start till A, B, and C is finished. And Z can't start till A, B, and C are finished. So rather than have all of those lines, we could tidy it up with something called a collector node, or probably call it a milestone. So we've created another milestone in our project plan that says A, B, and C have finished. We can now proceed with X, Y, and Z. So it's a drawing aid to tidy up a diagram, a collector node or a milestone. A couple of rules for dependency charts. Uh, this isn't a software flowchart. You can't go backwards. There's no decision boxes. There's no looping. We plan for success. We do J, then we can do K. After K, we do L. L is going to work, so we go on and do the next task. We cannot loop back. It's not a flow chart. It's a dependency chart. And the second rule is we can't have things dangling. Everything must go somewhere. So in this example, when J is finished, we can start K. And when J is finished, we can start L. But L isn't going anywhere. So why are you doing it? Nothing's dependent on it. And then somebody says, well, we have to do L. So usually you've forgotten that L leads into something else. You know, we can't do this until L has been approved as finished. So no looping, no dangling. A couple of conventions have a start task and a finish task. I will have a look at an example in the next video clip. But a start task and a finish task makes it clear that there's no loops and there's no dangles. Use the same task names or the code numbers from your work breakdown structure so you know exactly which tasks you've got. And here's an example of a dependency chart. We've got a start task. We've got a finish task. We've got no loops. We've got no dangles. The start of the project, I can do task A. When A is finished, I can do tasks B, C, and D. I can't do E until B and C have finished. It's a dependency chart for the project. And the best way of creating this is to get the project team to do it, to discuss the sequence of activities. Uh, in this example, the project team are destroying their work breakdown structure by moving the tasks around. They are saying, when you finish that, can we start this? Can these be done at the same time? They're communicating. 
very important in project management. And it is becoming their project plan. It's not something that I am telling them as project manager. It is their plan. By doing this, they are working out the things that they forgot on the work breakdown structure. So they're saying, when you've done that, can I do this? And somebody's saying, oh, you've got to come and collect it first. So they're realizing there's a new task about collection, such that somebody is assigned to that, somebody does it. And a mistake has been prevented on the project because they're talking about the sequence of activities. And we can post it onto the, uh, the wall. It's a very good communication tool working out the sequence of activities. And it's um, a tool that uh, people talk about. Now, oh, what's that? That's the dependency chart for my project. This is all of that tasks that are involved in my project. So it's an excellent communication tool, the dependency chart.